until they leave the nest. Uh, that's what, for many 30 years. And so, you know, she's the 18, 20 years or so. And then there, we launched them. They're on their own from there. So it's crucial that we give them that solid foundation and train them in the things of God. What can you do to do that? Well, being faithful to church is one thing. When you're at home, let them see you pray. Let them see you spend time in God's Word. Those are all examples that are going to be set in their mind for years to come. Doing the right thing, all of that stuff makes the difference. <clears throat> we go back in the scriptures to 1 Samuel and we realize there was a lady that wanted a child really, really bad. And she prayed and prayed. It seemed like the Lord just hadn't opened her womb. But you know what? God heard her prayer and answered her prayer. And this is what she said. She said, as long as, as the Lord gives him to me, he is, he is basically the Lord's, the Lord's child. That's right. And I'm going to just give him over to the Lord. And his name was Samuel. And I'd say Samuel turned out pretty well. Amen. And I think a lot of that goes back to the commitment that his mother made. So I want to ask all of you as a church to join us in prayer uh, for little Ella and for Graham that we'll see them grow up uh, to make a difference for the cause of Christ. So let's bow our heads as we pray together. Father, we thank you that we as a church can see a dad, a mom, a dad, someone that is interested in raising their children in the right way. Oh, this is such a hard thing to do, to parent in these days, to be the example that we need to be in front of our children. But Lord, we can do it. And I pray you give strength uh, to these parents that are here today. Lord, I pray for Brent. I pray for Ashley. Uh, Lord, that you strengthen them for the task that lies ahead. I pray for Chase today, Lord. You help him as well. Give them wisdom to make the decisions that are pleasing to you in their life. And then we pray, Lord, that you would use these youngsters. We know not what the future holds for each one of them. But Lord, we know that they both can make a difference in the cause of Christ in the days to come. And that's our prayer today, here on this Sunday morning. In Jesus' name, amen mm -hmm. and amen. Now I want you to just turn around this way if you would. And I said a while ago that if you have pictures with the pastor, it's going to be $10 a shot. $10 a shot. Just tease it. And uh, thank the Lord for these youngsters today. And uh, I'm telling you what, Ella looks like she could go from here right to a wedding today. <laughs> so she might could get in two things today while she's here. Anyway, yeah, let's give them some applause and some love today. And thank the Lord for them. Thank you all for being here. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, I want you, if you would, to turn your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew. We're going to start there. In the Gospel of Matthew, if you can find your place Which one? in Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Some people have referred to this as an invitation. Kind of like what we do at church sometimes. We Can't get through ministering the word, and then we give an invitation. We give an opportunity for someone to respond. You know, Dr. Billy Graham did that for years and years in his crusades. He would always call people forward for them to make a public stand for Christ if they were coming for salvation. I like that. I like that challenge. And so maybe this was something similar to that that Jesus did. Down at the end of chapter 11 he starts off with the word come. Come. That's an invitation, isn't it? Come unto me. Come unto me. All ye that are 
by laboring and are heavy laden, that I will give you rest. Now he spoke this to a bunch of people that were in bondage to religion. That's what religion will do to you. It'll put you in bondage. So Jesus says, come unto me. He didn't say, come to a church, come to a denomination. He said, come unto me. Come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, burned down with all the rules and the regulations, I'll give you rest. Then he said this in verse 29. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. And then there's another important word in verse 29. Learn of me. Learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy. This is compared to the yoke of Judaism and all, all of that religion and rules and stuff they have put down on people. And this kind of thing is still going on today. So he says, my yoke is easy. My, my burden is light. So I want to talk today for just a few moments about God's plan. God's plan for stress-free living. God's plan for stress-free living. God's divine plan for stress-free living. You know, we're living in the most stressed-out generation that's maybe ever been. Uh, they tell us, the statistics tell us that the number one prescribed medication in the United States is antidepressants. Antidepressants. Isn't it interesting? We live in the land of the free, the home of the brave, opportunity everywhere, and yet we're stressed, depressed, and all messed up in our minds. Well, here is a, a divine plan for your success. There are really uh, two aspects to the gospel. Uh, it's the person of Jesus, and then the principles of Jesus. The person of Jesus, you got to have that to, to spend eternity in heaven. Are you listening? You've got to have the person of Jesus in your heart to spend eternity in heaven. Not everybody goes to heaven. You don't go to heaven just because you're born in America. You don't go to heaven just because you go to church. You go to heaven if you have a personal relationship with Jesus. Can I get a witness on that? Amen. But then there's this other side to this. Jesus not only said come, but he said, take my yoke upon me and learn of me. That's the principles that Jesus taught, right? That's how you have victory in your life, is to get into the word of God and learn the principles that Jesus taught. Uh, I was thinking of a passage. It's over in John's gospel, uh, chapter 8. And Jesus said a whole lot of things in John chapter 8 but he did make this statement in John chapter 8 uh, the Bible says in verse 30 that many believed on him so there's a lot of people that came to know Jesus as Savior but then the very next verse he said to those which had believed on him if you continue in my word then you're my disciples indeed isn't that amazing Jesus said, oh, look, I'm glad you got saved. I'm glad you believed on me. You meant you've taken a good step in your life. Wonderful. But now if you continue in my word, if you continue in my word, that's the principles that Jesus taught. I could say it another way. You, you have the good news, which involves the life of God, his nature, and then you've got the other side, which involves the law of God. The dictates your conduct toward him and toward others. When I said a well, while ago to raise these children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, that's what, that's what it's all about. It's learning those principles 
the laws, the commandments of Jesus. That how, how can we call ourselves a Christian if we're not following in the steps of Jesus, following the commandments and following the instructions that Jesus gave? Jesus one time, he said, why, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do the things I say? You don't follow my teachings. And yet you call me Lord. See, there are two sides to this whole thing. Uh, so you have the king, and then you have the kingdom. It's another way of putting it, right? You've got the person of Jesus. You've got the principles that he taught. Here's just another way to say it. You have the king and then you have the kingdom. You got the king, that's your relationship. You have a relationship with King Jesus. And then the other side is the kingdom. That's your behavior within the kingdom of God. I think we don't stress behavior enough in these days. We just, you know, we're glad to hear news that somebody got saved but not really interested in whether they follow through with the Lord and are living according to the word of God. Come on now, folks. Uh, Jesus would have us to continue in the things of God, to, to, to continue following his commandments, his instructions. Every believer has embraced the person of Jesus. You had to to get saved. You had to to get saved. If you have not embraced the person of Jesus, you, you can't be saved. It's just that simple. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Where's that? That's in the Bible. Right. Where's it in the Bible? Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. And then we have simple verses straight up like Acts 16. 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Excuse me, it's not Muhammad. It's Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm not politically correct. I'm not here to be politically correct. That's right. I'm not here to be popular. I'm here <coughs> to be a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't get saved by believing in Muhammad. You say, well, then people are sincere about their religion. Yeah, and you can be sincerely wrong. Right. If I want to fly to Atlanta, I can't go get a ticket that takes me to Dallas. Is that right? I got, got to go to the right gate? I can preach on that a while. You got to go to the right gate, and you got to get on the right plane, and you got to head in the right direction, or you're not going to get to that destination. It's the same way with the Lord. It's believe of the Lord Jesus Christ. But then this learning step, learning, take my yoke upon me and learn of me. Well, that takes a little effort. That takes a little effort, right? It takes a little effort. That means you've got to spend some time growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. That means you've got to take a little time, do a little Bible study. That means you have to invest in time in the scriptures. And that's what a lot of people don't want to do. They don't want to do that. I just want to, I just want to know that I'm saved. I just want to know that I don't have to go to hell. But then the following Jesus, the learning. He said, come, right? Take my yoke upon you and then learn of me. Learn of me. Continue in my word. Continue in my word. Those are the instructions that Jesus gave us. So what is God's divine plan for your success? Well, it's having a personal relationship with Jesus. Then it's growing in the things of God. That's what we call sanctification in theology. And then that means that we follow through on our commitment that we've made with the Lord. We have a relationship, yes, but we have a desire to get in this book and to learn. We just started a verse-by-verse -verse study 
on Wednesday nights in Ephesians. That's a good way to learn a Bible book is to just go through it, right? Verse by verse, chapter by chapter. You say, wow, that seems tedious. It might be to some people, but that's a good way to learn the scriptures. Amen. Go ahead and be faithful in your daily Bible reading. If you started out this year to, to uh, read through the Bible this year, uh, just be faithful to that and keep right on. Stay right on track. They say that people that make New Year's resolutions, most of them have uh, dropped them by uh, 30 days later. They, they say that uh, the highest day or month for uh, new subscriptions in uh, gyms is December. Everybody wants to, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get in shape next year. I'm going to start working now. And by January 30, most of them have never been back. Of course, they don't care about that. They've got your membership. they got your money. They're, they don't care if you come back or not. Diets. People starting on a diet. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm not going to eat such and such. I'm going to eat such and such. But man, when they put it in front of you, and it looks so good, why not eat it, right? And so, all oh, this. Look, if you've made a commitment, and that's what it is, it's a commitment to get into the Word. Be faithful to that commitment. So stay in there. That's part of God's divine plan for your success. Then you have the favor of God, the blessing of God that comes your way because the Lord says right there in that text, learn of me, take my yoke upon me and what you shall find, rest. Rest. I talked about this rest the other night. Uh, it's a quietness of soul. Quietness of soul. How many people do you know that have quietness of soul in the midst of this crazy world that we're living in? I doubt you know too many. But if they have it, you know where they have, where they found it, how they got it. It's in a personal relationship with Jesus and a consistent daily walk with Him. Let's bow our heads as we pray together. Father, what a joy it is to come and worship the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the Master, that is the Savior, that is the Christos, the Anointed One, the, the Messiah. There's only one. We know that. I pray you would help each of us to be faithful to that one, to that one, and that, Lord, we might follow your divine plan for our success and our joy in life. It's not difficult in the formula. It's just simple. But so many don't follow it. Help us to follow it. We pray. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Is there someone today that say, Pastor Bruce, I, I can't say that I've ever begun a personal relationship with Jesus. I've gone to church some. I've read a little bit of the Bible, but I can't say that I have that personal relationship with Jesus. Today could be the day for you. Just open your heart. Open your heart and say, I want this Jesus living on the throne of my heart. I want the salvation that's provided in him. You can pray something very simple. It doesn't have to be a complicated request. Just something as simple as Jesus saved me. I yield I repent today of, of, of a life of rebellion and sin. 
I'll come to you and you welcome me. He knows the desire of your heart. And then just as important is that you make that commitment. Lord, help me to be faithful, to spend some time in your word, to be faithful to my church, to get all that I can to learn of him that I might grow in my faith. For that, Father, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Can we stand for our feet this morning? <coughs> Again, I want to thank you for coming out to our service here at Linwood Baptist Church this morning. If you're looking for a church home, give us a shot. Give us an opportunity to maybe earn that uh, place in your life. If you're not a member, um, pray about that. Think about that. Give some serious consideration to it. We're a young ministry. We're growing. We're, we're locking arms together, determined to make a difference for the cause of Christ in our community and around the world. So we'd love to have you in on that ground floor level of growing together in the things of God. Uh, there may come a day where you'll have to come really early to get a seat.